Let's begin with a story. Today, a man lost his car key on a ski slope. He'd look for it, but come on, you can't find a lost key in the snow on the side of a mountain, because that's impossible. Then, I sensed a strong certainty that God wanted me to pray with him and for us to ask God to help us. I felt hesitant to pray. I mean, it felt silly. What if I ask God and we don't find it? But I was certain God wanted us to pray. So we prayed, God, you know where this key is. Please help us find it. You say we don't have because we don't ask. So we are asking. We said amen and went looking. No key. I didn't understand. Why do you ask us to pray? So we walked down the last leg of the slope and saw a black speck. We dug. It was the key. Y'all, a key in the snow on a mountain. Impossible, except for a God who hears our prayers. There are obvious ways to uh, poke fun at the triumphal nature with which stories like these are told, but I want to talk about how believers tend to approach prayer a little bit more in depth. We might think of a story like this as a coincidence miracle, a very surprising coincidence with significant beneficial consequences. Now, of course, people of faith will want to quibble with the word coincidence because they'll want to attribute the result to God. But the point is, you don't actually need to posit a supernatural explanation for how someone was able to find a car key on a ski slope. It's the kind of thing that really could just be a good stroke of luck. Though given the immediate religious context, the believer will want to say that it was more than that. There are two questions we might want to ask about stories like this. One, how convincing should they be to skeptics? And two, how much reassurance should they actually provide to believers? Answering the first question is easy. They shouldn't be convincing at all. As Nicholas Everett explains, quote, it would be reasonable to infer the probable, to some degree, existence of God from the occurrence of coincidence miracles if such an inference were an essential part of the best explanation for the occurrence of such miracles. In other words, if we could not explain why this particular happy coincidence should have happened, except on the assumption that God had had a hand in producing it, then from the occurrence of coincidence miracles we could draw a more or less probable conclusion that God exists. But ex hypothesi, that is not the position. Since a coincidence miracle does not require any violation of the laws of nature, nor is it inexplicable naturalistically, an adequate explanation of such an event can be obtained entirely within the framework of natural law. We already know improbable stuff happens from time to time, and we don't need God to explain finding car keys in the snow. On to the second question. I'm personally fine with someone forming the belief that God is in the habit of answering their prayers if they aren't aware of any good reasons to doubt it. I just think that there are good reasons to doubt it. Let's stick to the data of prayer itself. First, basically anytime someone thinks their prayer was answered, you don't need to appeal to God to explain it. This even goes for alleged healing miracles. See the description for more on that. Second, we're incredibly prone towards counting the hits and ignoring the misses in these kinds of situations. In other words, confirmation bias looms large here. Scott Clifton has some humorous things to say about this. Quote, our brains are predisposed to seek out and remember information that affirms our preconceptions and omit or explain away information that doesn't. If you get results, glory be to God. If you don't, God works in mysterious ways. If I spent a year praying to my house cat and found that my prayers appeared to be answered with the same frequency and to the same degree as your prayers to Jesus Christ, would you take me seriously when I told you that I know from personal experience that praying to my furry friend works? Of course not. But then why wouldn't you? Why do you subject my anecdotal evidence to a higher level of critical scrutiny than your own? Third, and in confirmation of the last point, any time prayer is rigorously tested, it does no better than chance. You know, there's lots of controlled double-blind experiments, randomized trials um, of people who say, let's test to see if prayer does anything. You know, heart attack patients or people with cardiac problems, tons and tons of cases, and they're like, yeah, the, the you know, Prayer seems to have no more effect than chance um, in these cases. In fact, some cases it makes it worse because the patient is now anxious that they're not going to confirm the prayers. So it's just surprising that whenever we test it in a rigorous way, it doesn't seem to be confirmed. Given all of this, I see no reason why something like finding car keys after prayer, even if in an improbable scenario, should really be taken as an overwhelming confirmation that God was directly involved. It's a little bit surprising, actually, how inept prayer seems to be on the hypothesis that God exists or Christianity is true. Tap on this video next to me. Let me explain.